When an event session starts inside of the engine, the memory buffers for buffering events as they generate is set up based on three different session option values that exist for an event session. The first of those that we're going to take a look at is the max memory value. And what this does is it configures a relative value for the maximum size of the buffer space for events to be buffered into as they generate. And it's specified in either a value of kilobytes or megabytes. The reason that I say that it's a relative value is it's not what's going to actually compute out as the total maximum memory for the event session. Because event session buffers are created in 64 kilobyte increments and therefore will align on 64 kilobyte boundaries. So it's possible that if you look at the session memory information, it will be larger or smaller than what you configured for the max memory event session option. One of the big uses for increasing max memory is to reduce the strain or reduce the potential for having event loss occur. And one of the best examples of that is when you use the streaming target for extended events in SQL Server 2012. The most common way you're going to leverage this is the live data viewer inside of Management Studio. If the live data viewer disconnects under excessive event generation and the premise behind the live stream is that it can't affect server performance. And if it gets too far behind, the extended events engine will actually disconnect the stream from the event session and kill the overhead for having to buffer the events out to the streaming target. When that happens, you'll get an error message inside of Management Studio. And an easy way to prevent that from occurring is increasing the value for max memory so that you have additional buffer space inside of the engine for more events to be buffered without the session actually disconnecting. Now, the max memory session option directly correlates to the memory partition mode, which will be shown later inside of this module. When you log into a file target, these two different options can control the size of the file writes that occur for an event session that's generating large amounts of data because the size of each individual buffer is going to correlate to the way that the memory space is being partitioned inside of the event sessions definition as well. And what you want to try and do is target your memory partition mode and max memory together when you're using a, an event file target so that you don't have very small 64, 128 kilobyte flushes occurring to the file and you can maximize your writes out to the file for 256k maybe 512 kilobyte writes down to the file itself. The default value for max memory is 4 megabytes for an event session which is generally acceptable for most of the event sessions that might be running inside of extended events. However if you have a event session that's generating a large amount of events that four megabytes could become a limitation and you might want to increase the amount of buffer space that's available by adjusting max memory. In this demo, I want to show the default configuration for memory buffers inside of SQL Server Extended Events and then how you change or configure the max memory session option and the way the buffer size and distribution occurs under the default configurations that exist for an event session. I'm running this demo inside of SQL Server 2012, but it will work inside of SQL Server 2008 and higher. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an event session called default buffers, and we're just going to add the SQL Server error reported event. And there's no real rhyme or reason why this event was selected. We just have to have a minimum of one event or one target to create the event session. This was an easy event to pick. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create the event session and start it on the server. And then the next thing that we're going to do is take a look at the DMXE sessions DMV inside of the engine. And what we're going to do is we're going to filter for our event session name being default buffers. And we're going to select the columns associated with the buffer configuration for our event session. And what we'll see is by default we have three buffers that were created. The buffer size was roughly 1.4 gig in size. And if you do the math, this is actually going to be more than the default configured value of 4 meg. And that's because it has to align with a 64k boundary when we actually do the division out for our memory buffers. And then we can see what our total buffer size is associated with the event session running. Now what I'm going to do 
is going to go ahead and stop the event session. And then I'm going to go over to the UI. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our default buffer session. And we're going to go to the advanced page. And the advanced page is where we actually manage our memory configuration. Now, if we had left the event session running and went to the properties and then looked at the advanced page, all of these options would be disabled. And the reason for that is the options control how the event session sets things up when it initially starts. So once it's up and running, you can't change these. You have to stop the data collection to be able to change any of the event session options. So with it in a stop state, if we go to our properties and then advanced, we can change what our memory size is and it can be in kilobytes, megabytes, or gigabytes. Typically for max memory, I've never used it in the gigabyte range. I usually will adjust it up slightly depending on some of the other configuration options that we're gonna talk about later in this module are. But let's change it to a value of eight and we can go ahead and click okay. And the DDL for doing that, you can click the script button to be able to make that change is alter the event session on the server with max memory equals eight megabytes. And the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and start our event session and then take a look at the buffer size and distribution that's occurred for our event session. And here we'll see, we still have three buffers and our regular buffer size is roughly 2.8 gig in, in size. And that's a fairly large buffer. That means that under event generation, depending on what the max dispatch latency is that we'll talk about later in this module, it could take a full buffer, 2.8 gig of data to actually cause the events to dispatch down to the asynchronous targets. So it's something to keep in mind is how big do you want your, your actual buffer sizes to be for an event session. Now, we're not gonna drop this event session because we're actually gonna use it as a part of a later demo. But this concludes this demo for looking at and understanding how to set the max memory event session option for extended events. In this demo, I want to show how the max memory event session option can actually be leveraged to prevent the live data viewer inside of the UI from being timed out by the extended events engine and disconnected if it's generating a lot of events and the UI is not keeping up very well with being able to collect those events. And one of the tricks there is just to increase the amount of buffer memory that's available on the server so that you have more space to write bursts of events into that allows the UI to catch up and be able to collect those asynchronously. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a stored procedure called execute lots of statements. And all this stored procedure does is it loops a thousand times internally and it just generates a number of statement level events for each time that it's inside of the loop. And this is really effective at being able to do absolutely no work but generate millions of events inside of the extended events engine. So once we create our stored procedure, what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll look at an event session that I used for measuring the extended events overhead previously. And what we're gonna do is collect the module end event. We're gonna collect a, a number of actions associated with that. And then our stored procedure statement completed event. The details of the event session really aren't what matters. What we wanna do is just have an event session that's collecting the statement level events inside of the instance. And if we refresh our UI and watch the live data associated with our extended events overhead event session, the next thing we'll do is we'll execute the execute lots of statements stored procedure, but we're gonna give it a 100,000 loop count definition so that it generates enough events that we can actually see the extended events UI disconnect. And here's the message that we get. So Management Studio can't keep up with the event generation. Live monitoring has been disconnected to make sure that server performance does not get degraded. So this basically is telling us to look at our event session definition, reconfigure predicates so that we don't have so many events generating, and then we can restart the data feed. Now, what we can do if we know that our event se session definition is what we want it to be, and here it only collected 13,000 events. What we can do is we can stop our event session, go to the properties, advanced, 
and increase the max memory size associated with our memory buffers. So we can try a value of 32, start our event session again, come back to our live data UI, and restart the data feed. And the next thing we can do is test our execute lots of statements event. Now, this completed executing, and we can see over here in our UI, now we have events that are still flowing through. And the reason for that is we gave the extended events engine enough space to be able to buffer all of the events that we were gonna generate. And 32 meg really isn't a whole lot of memory that you're sacrificing for providing that additional event buffer space to handle burstable loads of high event generation on your instance. So this is one of the ways if you're working with the live data stream and you get that disconnect message, one of the things you could do would be go back and reconfigure max memory and give your event session a little bit more memory for handling the buffered events that are going to be generated under peak load and the UI will eventually be able to catch up from asynchronous consumption of those events. If it's under full load all the time, it may be that using the live data stream will never work. Eventually you're going to be able to fill all of the memory buffers if the UI is having to constantly process each of the events. So that might be a consideration where you write to a file and then you collect the files and do near real-time analysis by reading through the file data.